Hey, thanks for uh, joining us here at Buckeye Barbecue. So today we're gonna take a brisket flat and we're gonna brine it and cure it over the course of probably about the next week. And then we're gonna put it on the smoker and turn it into a nice pastrami. So thanks for joining and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our brine for our brisket flat. So I've got three quarts of water in this pot uh, which is large enough for my brisket flat to fit in to brine. So I'm gonna add a cup of kosher salt and three tablespoons of pink curing salt. This is also known as prog powder. And pink curing salt is not normal table salt and it's not the pink Himalayan salt that you see sometimes these days. Uh, it is a special kind of salt. Um, so you definitely need to get that kind. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the burner on here. Because we're gonna need to bring this to a boil to dissolve all of this. We also have one uh, cup of white sugar and one half cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna put that in the pot. And I should have already had a spatula out, but we'll find a spatula to make sure we get all of these ingredients. And we're also going to add some honey. A half a cup, and I actually only have as much honey as I have, but it's probably about a half a cup. So we're going to pour that in as well. Okay. And now in this bowl here, I have got a mixture of five tablespoons of pickling spice, one tablespoon of whole coriander seed, one tablespoon of whole yellow mustard seeds, a tablespoon of dry oregano. So I'm going to dump all of that in. Oh, and the other thing I had in here was uh, about four cloves of garlic minced up. So that is everything for the brine. So I'm gonna let this come to a boil, make sure all of the salts and sugars are dissolved. And in the meantime, I'm going to get my brisket flat out and make sure uh, to get uh, it trimmed up if it needs it. And uh, I'll bring you back for that. Okay, so our brine has cooled down. We're gonna drop our brisket flat in there. And I'm going to use a plate on the top of that because we don't want it to float to the top. So I'll put the plate in and that will keep it down in the brine. We're going to refrigerate this now, covered for five to seven days. When we pull it out of the refrigerator, if we were to boil this then in water, that would be corned beef. Since we're going to smoke it, it's going to be pastrami. So we will bring you back for that cook on the smoker. Okay, so our brisket that is going to be pastrami has come out of the uh, brine after five days. Um, I brought it to our camp, so I'm going to cook it here on our uh, Rectech bullseye pellet cooker. And I made a rub to put on that. And that consisted of three, uh, a quarter cup of ground coriander, three tablespoons of ground black pepper, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, three tablespoons of brown sugar, and one half tablespoon of ground mustard. So I'm just going to apply that like you would any rub. I'm going to do fat side up first because I intend to go fat side down in the cooker at least to start. So we're just gonna apply the rub. 
Again, always try to apply it from up high so you get the most even coat possible. Can break up any clumps that the brown sugar has. Always try to get the sides as best you can. A lot of times when the piece of uh, meat is this small, I'll sort of stand it up on its edge and get the sides with the stuff that, uh, the rub that has fallen uh, onto the uh, sh cookie sheet. And this is just the flap, so it's reasonably thin, so you don't wanna go overly heavy on the rub, in my opinion. And hopefully you can see on the video that the, uh, the flat has changed colors, not nearly as, uh, as pink like, like it was when I first unpackaged it. The brine will do that, so to me this looks like I was expecting it to look. Really not sure how long this will take. It is essentially going to be cooked like a brisket. We're going to go, in, instead of time and temperature, it'll be about tenderness. So uh, I expect that to be around 200, 203, maybe even a little bit higher, but we'll just have to see. And I'm really not worried about it. Uh, I'm thinking it'll probably take maybe five hours, but again, if it takes seven, it takes seven. If it takes four, it takes four. So many people want to know, well, how long do I cook it for? And that question, the answer to it has so many variables. Uh, it's just impossible to answer. It's one of the things about barbecue. So try to avoid getting into a, uh, I think this will take this long. I'm going to set a timer for this long type of a uh, situation. Barbecue is its own animal and it takes what it takes. So we've got this ready to go. I'm going to get the uh, Rectech bullseye fired up. And I will bring you back when we put it on the cooker. Okay, the bullseye is up to temperature. It's running about 189 degrees right now, which is great. I'm gonna put the soon to be pastrami right in the center. I have uh, sprayed with cooking spray the grates just to Make sure we don't have any sticking or anything and I'm gonna go ahead and plug a temperature probe in just so we can keep an eye on that internal temperature just do my best to get it in the center there I'm going to keep this on the uh, smoke boost setting. Um, it's the low setting on the Rectech for at least a couple of hours. Um, so it'll run anywhere from 180 to 210, something like that. And then I will probably bump it up. I'm not even going to look or think about this for two hours. And we're just going to let it go. I'll make sure the uh, cooker's running the way it should be. Other than that, I'm not going to open the lid or anything. So I'll bring you back in a couple of hours and we will uh, have a spray ready, half, half apple cider, half, uh, half, half apple cider vinegar and half water uh, because this is the flat only, not nearly as much fat as the point of a brisket. I wanna make sure that we keep it moist and I will likely wrap it sometime when it uh, gets up around the stall, somewhere between 160 and 175, depending on how it's looking. So we'll bring you back here in a little bit. Okay, we are right at two hours right now on this uh, pastrami. Our internal temperature's at 144, which is uh, a little higher than I expected by now. And our uh, rec tech is running at around 201. So I'm pleased with that. It's been running really well. By the way, I, if you're looking for a pellet grill, I cannot recommend Rectech enough. R-E-C-T-E-Q. Uh, take a look. 
Uh, I wish I would have bought one instead of my Weber smoke fire, if I'm being honest. And that's probably going to be the uh, next pellet grill I purchase, whenever that is. Uh, they make much bigger ones than this little bullseye. But this bullseye is so versatile, and I love it. So I wasn't planning on doing a Rectech review today, so I'll leave it at that. But let's look at our pastrami and see how it's doing. Okay, it's looking really good. Uh, bark is starting to set. Just try to scrape a little bit and it's not moving much. Uh, still not ready to wrap. I want to get a little more color on it. I do want to add some moisture to this though, so I have a mixture of half apple cider vinegar, half water, and I'm just going to give it a squirt. Not much fat on this top side, so I'm just going to squirt the top side. When you spritz your brisket, you want to avoid spritzing the fat because we want to get the fat to render and that will just slow that process down. But this whole top side, there was not any real fat, so I'm going to spray the whole thing. Um, I'm going to probably grab my probe thermometer soon and just uh, get a second opinion on the internal temperature. Uh, this flat is pretty thin, so getting the, the probe I have in there now in the right spot could be difficult. So I'll grab my handheld thermopen and we'll check the temperature out and uh, go from there. So I will bring you back at the stage when we wrap this, but right now I'm pretty pleased. It's looking good. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry about the background noise. Uh, people are mowing the grass near here, so uh, hopefully you can still hear me. It has been right at four hours, just a little shy of four hours. So we're gonna take a look at how this flat is doing. And I'm definitely liking the color a lot more than the, the two hour mark. Bark is setting up pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna give it a spritz. It is uh, probing between 140 and 150, depending on where I check. Uh, so I'm gonna give this just a little more time and then I'm gonna think about wrapping it. I'm also gonna up the temperature from the, uh, the low that produces a lot of smoke up to probably 225, maybe 250. Uh, I plan to uh, serve this tonight for dinner, so while you can never rush a brisket of any kind, I am gonna go ahead and bump the temperature up since we're only at 190 or so, just trying to get some good smoke. So I will bring you back when we wrap it, which probably will be in less than an hour. Okay, so I brought in the uh, brisket flat. I'm gonna wrap it. It's temping about 160 in most places. Uh, a little earlier than I like to wrap brisket, but the color is good and I'm really afraid of the flat drying out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is spray some of my spritz on the aluminum foil. I typically wrap brisket in butcher paper, um, but I actually don't have any here at the camp. So we're going with foil, which will be fine too. Uh, plus it'll help it get done a little quicker, I think, than butcher paper. So we're just gonna add some of that spritz. We'll put the uh, brisket right in the center. I hope you can see that. I think it looks really good uh, right now. And then we'll just wrap it up. So we really wanna get it sealed tightly. Keep that juice in there and not let it steam away. So we're going to get this back out on the rec tech. I have bumped the temperature to 250 and I'm going to get that uh, temperature probe back in. Try to get it in the same spot, which is right over here, and try to get it as centered as I can. Uh, it's a little difficult when it's wrapped, but we'll get it in a good spot and monitor that temperature. And probably until it gets uh, around 200 internal, and then we will uh, uh, probe it a time or two, and we're really checking for tenderness then. Um, might need to go a little longer, or it might be ready to go. Uh, we essentially want it to feel like it's uh, going in uh, uh, a hot knife into butter, so 
Uh, we will bring you back when we uh, take her off. Okay, so I pulled the pastrami off about, uh, I don't know, probably an hour, hour and a half after I wrapped it. It actually climbed pretty quickly in temperature then. Um, so I let it go. It was probably about 208 when I finally pulled it uh, based on its tenderness. So we're going to cut into it, see how we did. Uh, so I happened to note the way the grain was running on this uh, brisket flat. Um, so I'm just going to cut it like that. You always want to cut against the grain with most meat, especially briskets, and that way you get the most tender pieces. So I'm just going to start cutting. So the first thing I'm noticing is the color. I love the color. It looks great. So I hope that the uh, color comes through on the video. Uh, it's really a nice... Uh, Pink looks great. Uh, reasonably tender. I've made more tender brisket before, but it's pretty good. Let's do one more slice here. Do the bend test. So, doesn't break under its own weight, which is good. Sorry about my videography as usual. And the pull test, pretty good. So I guess all that's left to do is taste. So we're gonna do that. I won't do it on camera, um, but we'll see how it is. Really good. The flavor is great. If I'm being honest, it's a little dry, but not to the point where it's bad. I'd like it to be a little more moist. Man, the flavor is good. Seasoning on the outside is good. The bark's a little bit soft, but when you wrap in foil, that tends to happen. So if my regular brisket had a bark that was this soft, I, I would be pretty uh, disappointed. But for the pastrami, it's actually pretty good. So overall, a success. I, I think I might create a short video of my version of a Reuben, which isn't really a Reuben at all. But uh, look for that, and it'll be done with this exact piece of corn be or pastrami. So thank you for joining. As always, I appreciate you uh, tuning in to Buckeye Barbecue. If you like what you're seeing, as amateur as it is, please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe. Thank you.